What's going on fam? Welcome back to the channel. In this box, I have the brand new Under Armour Shadow Elite 2.0. And in this box, I have the prototype colorway that Under Armour was kind enough to send me a pair of. And they are not even in my size, but they're insane. Let's hop into the unboxing and we'll do both. Don't worry, we'll get into both. But I wanted to show you guys what the Under Armour Shadow Pro 2.0 looked like. Shadow Elite 2.0, excuse me. They've changed names, it's all over the place. But Let's get into it. So you've got the Under Armour box in all black with of course the big white Under Armour logo. You've got the logoing on the long side, short side up in the top left corner there. Of course the Under Armour logoing there. And then here is your sizing plus a little picture of what it looks like, which is kind of nice. So you've got this really nice um, kind of white, yellowy and blue and black accent colorway, which is fantastic. I think they look really nice in photos. I'm excited to see what they look like in pictures. This of course is my regular usual size nine US, a UK eight, a Euro 42.5 and the 27 centimeters, the Under Armour Shadow Elite 2.0. FG. Now, I was very complimentary of the original version. Whoa, holy moly. Okay, look at that. Jeez Louise. Wow, Under Armour has upgraded this quite a bit. We will talk all about it. I'm going to do this really fast. Tie it up. There we go. Goodness gracious. These look insane. Very, very nice. So I was actually quite complimentary of the first generation. And what was actually really cool was talking to some of the Under Armour, the, some of the product designers at Under Armour. I was able to give a little bit of feedback through video and through uh, like Zoom chats with them. Basically, I said, hey, look, these are really, this is a really great concept. I'm actually a big fan of the soul plate. I think it's very aggressive. I think it's really fun to play with. And of course has like the nerdy tech feature being carbon fiber. Can you make it a one piece upper instead of a two piece upper? Because I felt that it was the lack of stretch felt a little bit annoying at times. It was really hard to break in the double layer upper with the mesh on the like the underside and then that synthetic wrap around. Um, you guys can go watch my video of that one. Plus I have like a play test video of that as well. Um, it was a it was a good football boot. It was a pretty good starting point. It was incredibly locked in. Like you, there was zero slippage on the inside of the boot, which was kind of cool. So I'm hoping that they've continued that with this one. And I have pretty high hopes for this boot because I think it looks great. And they've gone with kind of a one piece upper, if you will, or a little bit more of a traditional like one piece upper. So that is uh, the Under Armour Shadow Elite 2.0, which is, I just, I think they look pretty sick, honestly. Really nice silhouette, great carbon fiber sole plate. Let's get these unboxed, and then I want to show you guys the prototype version, which of course you probably saw on the feet of Inketia and a few other players. So let's get these out of the way completely, actually, and swap it for this box. Now, this box is all the same features. So you've got everything the same, except now you've got a promo sample and has the global football. These are a men's size 10 US in the Shadow Elite. And uh, yeah, October shipping date was October 16th, 2023. So several, several months ago, these were meant, I think, to go out to a pro player and look at these. So these are the exact same shoe as these ones, but of course they are in this beautiful prototype colorway, which is more of a white and volt yellow with the blue accents. I'm not actually sure which one I like better, but God, these are cool. I just wanna show you these uh, because I think these are absolutely sick, cool color. And of course, uh, thank you to Under Armour for giving me a pair of boots that don't exist in the public, which is pretty awesome. So these are gonna go right back there in the boot wall. I am, of course, not gonna wear these because these are a whole size too large for me, uh, but they are very, very cool. And of course, having a pair that doesn't exist on the market is kind of a thing that I enjoy, you know? I like boots that you can't buy, which is pretty sweet. So thank you to Under Armour, I appreciate you guys for sending these out. So let's get these back in the box and get back to, of course, what we're here for, which is the really, really cool 
Shadow Elite 2.0. Now let's talk tech features. So the upper is completely different from the first generation. Um, sole plate is very, very similar. It is, I think, basically the same now, which is really, really nice. So you've got the full length carbon fiber sole plate, which stretches from toe to heel. And then you've got all these different bladed studs, which are supposed to, each stud is supposed to have a particular motion or uh, purpose, I guess. This heel area is a little bit interesting to me, especially with the different lengths of studs. If you can see there, some of the studs are actually different lengths from each other, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the forefoot, I think, is very, very nice, super neutral. Uh, I don't think it's overly aggressive for AG pitches. Now, I might get in trouble for saying that. The reason I do say that, though, is because they are completely flat and they are bladed studs that aren't too long lengthwise nor are they really wide either. That's one thing that, I know this is a complete throwback, this is a long time ago, but the T90 Laser 3 remake, or they weren't even remakes, the originals that I did a review on not that long ago had all bladed studs, but those were absolutely chunky as hell, and they were just absolutely ridiculous and not safe to play on on AG. These, on the other hand, you might be able to get away with it, but of course, being an FJ sole plate, the recommended use is on those firm ground pitches. But I think these look really cool. It does have a decent amount of snapback. I'm actually gonna take this uh, little cardboard piece out of it and then we'll go like that. So it does have a decent amount of snapback. There is quite a bit of flexibility here though in the forefoot area, which I think was on purpose. And then of course you get a little bit of that torsional rotation and then very, very stiff here through that midfoot, which is what you want to get that energy return, which is super nice. The upper on this boot is quite a lot softer than that first generation, which is really, really nice. So you have an Intellinit upper. So the entirety of this upper is Intellinit, which obviously you get quite a bit of exposed Intellinit here through the lacing system area and even wider. Anywhere where there is just the white material is all Intellinit. So Intellinit is basically their version of Flyknit. Adidas is Prime Knit. You know, all, all the uh, Puma's Evo Knit, like, Intellin Under Armour's Intellinit, it's all basically the same with slightly different structural capabilities. This obviously being, you can see kind of the different stretch patterns. So you've got some lines running this way, some lines running laterally, lines here running this direction and that direction. Basically what the, they've done is they've done kind of zonal stretching with these. So each piece of the upper has slightly different capabilities when it comes to stretching, which is really nice. What that does is provide lockdown, hopefully in certain areas of the boot that you want to stay pretty firm and then gives you a little bit of stretch and feel in areas where you want a little bit more of flexibility. My guess is especially through that forefoot area where you get a really nice soft uh, forefoot, which is awesome. And then of course here on the side, you get much more structure here through that midfoot area where you've got some of that ribbing texture there as well. You have exo mesh on the outside, uh, which is basically this all this blue material. So you've got a single layer, what looks like right here, and then over around the toe where you've got the dark blue, and then across again on this lateral side. And then it looks like you have the exo mesh as well, another layer that either goes under, I can't tell, Oh, yep, a little bit under. So this lighter blue goes underneath. You've got a little bit of a layer there, which is basically a waxy synthetic coating. You see this on a lot of different knit boots, um, go, ranging back all the way back to the OG, like Obra 1 and Superfly 4. And then, you, of course, you've got the Exo Mesh here, which is an actual mesh material, which you can see that pattern there on the lateral side of the midfoot and then the medial side of the midfoot. My guess is that Exo Mesh is really there to provide that lateral stability when you're moving side to side. Definitely something that was a huge key feature on the first generation of this boot was its ability to, it was basically marketed as an agility boot and this is moving towards like agility and speed a little bit, which is kind of nice. So this should be uh, suitable for players who do want that more faster, more barefoot feel while also not losing the lockdown and the sort of the performance benefits that came with the original version, which was absolutely crazy as far. It was like one of the most insane lockdown boots I've ever tried on my feet. I'm hoping that these live up to the hype. And honestly, I wouldn't be opposed to a boot that has a little bit less lockdown because a little bit less than what those were would still beat every other boot on the market. 
then you have a little bit more stretch and flex and, and better touch on the ball, I think I would take that trade off. So my guess is that that's what these feel like, but of course we'll find out in the on feet portion of the video as well. Um, you've got the silicone eye stay strike pods for ball control. So at least that's what they're marketed to towards you. They are quite sticky and silicone-y and, silicone and they do have a quite a bit of texturing to them. You've got a, anything where you've got the uh, electric volt yellow. So here, right there, right on the eyelet there, and then on both the lateral sides as well. My guess is these won't make a insane difference when striking the ball, but it's nice to have them there. I will comment on that in a play test if these are if these fit my foot well enough to do a play test. I'm, my guess is that these will. Uh, probably not affect the play really at all. Most likely they are there to provide more structure through the lacing system area so that there's no issues with lace holes popping out or breaking or anything like that. Just to provide a little bit of more of extra, extra, extra durability, can't speak very well, hey. Um, but overall, I think these look really nice. I think they are definitely, at least in hand, an upgrade over the previous generation. Um, heel area feels really nice and padded, which is lovely. And uh, yeah, let's uh, get to the on feet portion of the video and we'll talk a little bit more about what these are like on feet. Of course, what the sizing is like and see how they are in comparison to the previous generation and where they stack up as far as competition goes. Let's hop into it. All right, fam, out here on the turf with the Under Armour Shadow Elite 2.0. These are a boot that I am super, super excited about. Now, they're pretty thin in the midfoot, so I am a little concerned with the break-in time, but let's find out what they feel like on feet. So there you go. I actually fancy this design. I think they look really cool and really unique. Nothing else on the market really looks like this, which is awesome. Um, always a good sign. I am wearing a pair of Wii Foot Grip Socks. You guys can get 20% off um, both the thin grip socks, which I like to wear for all the on-feet portion and break-in videos, and then you can also get the thick ones online as well. Come inside and outside, 20% off with the code NOAH20 online. All right, let's get these on feet. Okay, so Intellinit feels a little bit more. Here we go. Bam. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay, all right. So as I was saying, the exo mesh here, you can see it kind of in this triangle there, and then I'll put it right there. So exo mesh there, there's that branding. So the exo mesh goes here on the medial side and the lateral side. It's actually like a silicone um, or a polyurethane, whatever the material they're using on the to cover it, plus an actual net, like a grid mesh material that you can kind of see there, um, and they use that over the top of the intelinet to make you have a little bit more lockdown in that area. The toe box feels excellent straight out of the box. I gotta say, the yeah toe toe box feels really really good. That little extra coating doesn't. Um, doesn't kind of inhibit any of your movement in the toes, which is great. And then the silicone, uh, I don't know what they call them, like eye stay strike pads, basically. Um, don't really feel those much. Uh, I imagine that's going to be more of like a striking or first touch thing where you'll notice those other than to have very, uh, a good amount of security there in the lacing system. So there's lacing that up. They lace up really nicely, no extra gaps or space. I really like how deep they went on this side with the lacing system. And then they also went pretty deep in the ankle on the medial side as well. These fit really remarkably well straight out of the box. So this is true to size. So shoes come right up to the toes, come right up to the end of the boot, which is perfect. I don't feel extra cramped on the end, but I would definitely go uh, true to size to get the best fit on the length. And the width is definitely stretching a little bit, which is nice. Um, I can definitely feel the exo mesh here on my arch. It's putting a little bit of pressure there on the inside of the arch, but as we go through the review and the play test, we'll definitely uh, get a feel for what those are like a little more as well. So let's get the right foot on. Also, super, super interesting. They feel really unique and I'm super excited to get these on the field to get them like on the ball and stuff because I'm interested by how these are gonna perform in like a, you know, even just an individual session type training environment, which obviously, as I said just now, you guys will see in the uh, play test video. So get those all laced up 
and they give you plenty of real estate when it comes to the laces, which is great. So you can kind of, you know, allow the boot to stretch a little bit before getting your feet in there. I'll just leave those single knot. The nice part about the exposed Intellinit as well, and the fact that there's really no structure outside of the, um, you've got a little bit of stru extra structure here through where those blue zigzags come into play, but especially in this lacing system area, there is total freedom to stretch and move, which is a little unique for boots that are completely made of knit because oftentimes you feel like there's definitely like a more predetermined shape, which is for some people kind of annoying because for wider foot shapes, that tends to be a little bit too snug for a lot of people, but this one seems to stretch a lot. And uh, as you can see from the width of these silicone strike pods, they're, uh, they're a little bit wider than they were when I wasn't in the shoe. And that just indicates to me that the knit is stretching really nicely. There's zo no pressure points there through the middle of the foot. So if you do have any sort of like, you know, little bumps or anything, or, you know, bones that are sticking out on the top of your foot, that's a, it's a pretty padded knit. So you should actually feel pretty comfortable there as well. So there you go. There's a, there's kind of a full look at the boots. They are actually quite comfortable. I would say they are squeezing my foot a little bit here on this point where this kind of blue crosses with the exo mesh. So this little coating here on the top crosses that point right there is a little bit snug and they're a little bit snug here down where the bone on my foot pokes out the most, um, but they don't hurt. They're not like, you know, they're not painful to wear, which is always a good sign. The sole plate feels really nice underfoot. I love how kind of bouncy and uh, it, it feels very aggressive. I would say this is obviously not a playing turf in my backyard. Uh, if I was playing on a pitch like this, I would not probably play in these boots just because I think they're a little more aggressive than what is necessary. Um, but I would say for firm ground pitches, these are gonna be super, super nice. And these are gonna be awesome. And then for newer turf, these should be probably totally fine. You guys will see on the play test. I haven't decided yet whether I want to do an FG or an AG play test, but uh, I think you guys will get a good idea once I do that as well. But honestly, overall, these boots feel really comfortable. I like how there's a little bit more volume in the toe area. I find that it creates like a little more roomy sensation without ruining the feeling of lockdown that you get through the medial side of um, or the lateral side and the medial side of that midfoot area. So you feel like you're super locked in here with the laces, um, but you have a, a nice little extra bit of volume here in the toe area so that, you know, you can still wiggle your toes. You still, you, you aren't feeling super cramped, which for a boot that's, you know, technically in the speed boot category, I think is a great feature as well. So as far as improvements, there's a full look. They look sick, obviously color combo with the Noah Cavanaugh kit, which is great. Um, actually, which reminds me, I am getting some new merch store stuff setting up, set up. So that will be uh, coming very, very soon. Um, but the point is, is that these are, I think, a big upgrade, like massive, massive upgrade to the previous generation, which I reviewed now over a year ago. I thought those were like a really cool first product and they felt so locked in and so secure that it was almost like suffocating my feet in a, in a way. Whereas I think these are much, these feel much more natural on feet while also still having that midfoot kind of grip on you so that you don't feel, you know, you don't feel like you're going to slip out of them. The heel area feels really nice as well. That's one area that I think is really important for speed boots just in general, but these ones feel super, super nice, especially especially with how aggressive the sole plate is and how much it's gonna kind of push you forward and up on your toes. It does feel really, really nice and locked in and there's no, you know, it, there's no extra spaces anywhere here on the collar area where the Intellinit touches your ankle, which is awesome, always a really good sign. So yeah, I mean, at least as far as, you know, comparing old gen to new gen, I'm taking new gen all day because I think the one piece upper they did a really nice job of going back just to you know simple basics which is great so touch on the ball is ooh hello that extra volume in the toe really does give you a bit of um, extra playroom there we go got that ball under control feels really nice yeah I mean really it's like as soon as you create a knit football boot like most knit football boots feel relatively similar to each other um, as far as like juggling goes, cause that knit material, it's usually 
expose knit on the um, lacing system area. And so you're gonna get a pretty consistent touch. The IntelliKnit feels definitely thicker than New Balance knit in the Tequila and the Furon. Um, I would say it feels a little bit more padded, maybe not thicker, but a little bit more like dense than the fly knit. Um, I think it definitely feels more premium than the Adidas knit on the Copas and the Predators. So what am I missing? Oh, I guess the Mizuno knit as well. So the Mizuno, um, I would say these just feel a little bit more robust than the Mizuno knit, even if the Mizuno knit like technically feels really nice. So I don't know, it kind of, for me, this knit material was super nice. It feels actually kind of padded, which is nice, uh, especially for a boot that's really lightweight and has that speed boot feel. And as you guys can see from the way that these are kind of wrapping around my foot, they really don't have any um there's a there's a little bit of hot spot there on the outside of the lateral you know the lateral side of the midfoot but overall i think that's going to go away once i start to really wear these and break them in um, i'm honestly a pretty big fan of these boots i really hope that these do okay on artificial ground because I don't know. I like to play on AG every once in a while. And although FG is like the main, you know, the main type of pitch down here in Australia, it just, uh, I think these will perform perfectly on FG. I have no, you know, I, I have no worries about that, but it's just the AG that I'm kind of like, Hmm, are these going to be a little too aggressive for AG, but we'll find out in the play test anyway. Um, underfoot feel with these studs feels totally fine. Really natural. I imagine these are going to be great for manipulating the ball and you are going to get a little bit of grip and extra grip material from that blue overlay. So anywhere where you do have uh, the blue, which is of course in that kind of striking area right there, any sort of passing with the outside or dribbling, you are gonna get a little bit of extra grip. It isn't like overtly grippy, I would say. It's more of just like a nice waxy sensation. Um, not waxy like the GX1, but definitely waxy in a way that makes it feel like you're gonna you know, perform, you're gonna have a similar touch in the rain versus uh, in the sunshine or whatever. So overall, Under Armour, nice work. Really, really cool product. I think these are gonna be uh, a smash hit for a lot of people. If you have a wider toe box, but a thinner midfoot, these are gonna be perfect for you, I reckon. If you have a wider foot in the forefoot and the midfoot like I do, it might take a little bit of break in time. They might be a little too snug for you. I'm used to breaking in boots, so I'm actually way more used to like my feet feeling a little numb every once in a while and like having pain on the outside of my foot for, you know, while playing, like I'm really used to that because I'm used to breaking in boots. But for those of you who don't do that, you may find these are going to be a little bit too difficult to break in, which is fair enough. Um, you do you, I'm not here to tell you what to do, but I would say that these probably are going to be suitable for sure for narrower foot types. I think for average width feet, you're going to be totally fine. And then for wider foot shapes, Maybe, maybe not. You probably have to try them on. Um, again, if you have a wide midfoot, you're probably gonna wanna stay away from these. I do have a wide midfoot, so I'm gonna do my best to break these in. If I can't break them in in a reasonable amount of time, I'll tell you guys, obviously, in the play test and uh, in the one month review as well, and we'll go from there. So that's kind of gonna be it for this video. I really enjoy the Shadow Elite 2.0. I think it's a huge upgrade from the previous generation with the double layer upper. I think they've done a really nice job of kind of putting all the elements that made that boot really cool and put it into one boot, and I'm hoping that this is gonna be more of a mainstay in my rotation because I do like the look of them. I think they look really cool and unique and I think Under Armour is really moving the right direction as far as their boots go. And you know, hopefully we'll see an update for um, the Magnetico, the clone Magnetico as well coming soon because I think the kind of the technical specs of that boot and this boot as well with the carbon fiber are, are pretty cool. So keep going Under Armour, keep doing your thing. Um, these are gonna be a, a fun boot to play in I'm sure and I'm looking forward to the play test. So hit that like button if you got value from this video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure, first link in the description, you guys go down and you can purchase and get 20% off your Wee Foot Grip Sock order. As always, be awesome. Take care. I'll see you guys in the next video.